Hello, I am your autistic uh, visiting speaker, another one of them. I am 53 years old. I did a short comedy course uh, when I was 50 and became a stand-up comedian when I was 51, a fledgling comedian, one of the very many autistic comedians. Uh, the comedy world is full of uh, autistics, those who know they are and those who don't know they are but I know they are. It's very common for neurodivergence to escape into comedy because they have encountered the world. Now, uh, I need to introduce you to a few things. This is my podium, my lectern, and also my CD case. <laughs> this is my talk. So, I, uh, this talk was once on my mobile phone. I transcribed it onto here. This is how I talk. I talk in uh, 10 different colored felt tips. And then I read the talk because I have not yet had the chance to learn it. But the next time I deliver the talk, I will have learned it. The talk will be improvised so that it is 10 minutes uh, shorter than it would otherwise have been because we are starting late. And so I am now going to read what the red pen has to say. And I can see that the red pen is telling me, welcome to my talk, unexpected, autistic childhood in the 1980s. When I was a child, while we didn't have the word autistic, I showed I was autistic in every possible way. The grown-ups called it unexpected. They told me, you never do what we expect. You're not like other children. They meant I didn't behave like other children, as if there was a way of being a child. I didn't follow the expected child way. Home was fine. I was among my people. Mum and Dad were unexpected too. Dad's big interest was flying saucers. Mum's big interest was being right, following the law. <laughs> big hand for my mum, following the law, the law, Dad and I, oh no, 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 uh, being the law, the, the law Dad and I followed. Mum's law was I could be myself so long as I didn't hurt anyone. That didn't work at school. The kids didn't love kangaroos the way I loved them. They didn't like Victorian comic opera, especially when I sang it. I attracted violence. It was like although I was a child, I wasn't a child in the expected child way. The other children noticed. But what was the expected child way? Why couldn't I follow the way? Did it have something to do with my parents? When I met other kids' parents, I could see they resembled other parents. There was an expected parent way. Other parents were not like my dad. They didn't talk about the electromechanical plasma reaction drive powering the first real flying saucer. Other parents, like their kids, had an easy social way about them. My mum couldn't do that. She thought she was talking in the easy social way, but she wasn't social. She was individual. Other parents noticed this. I noticed, but I didn't tell her because she was always right. That's what set me, mum and dad, apart. It came down to communication, the endless stream of talk about nothing, small talk. We didn't talk in the social way. We liked to talk about interests and preoccupations other people didn't share. I dreamed of going to school, talking about nothing hanging about in groups, bonding with other children through our shared big interest in talking about nothing, gaining points for talking in the expected child way. And what do points make? Prizes. 
I'd be prized as a typical child. I'd be valuable. Other children would value me. The teachers would value me. I'd be an asset. Not being able to do the all-important social thing made me not valuable in school eyes. When I talked about what interested me, I was rewarded by a glazed expression from other children. The expression meant, we've got a right one here. <laughs> I was the right one they had here. Being like other kids felt like an exam I'd never get a good mark in. So why bother? I told myself that when I left school, I'd get on with being unexpected. I'd meet unexpected people. We'd do unexpected things and live unexpected lives and have unexpected adventures and be gloriously unexpected. If you think you're unexpected in this room, give yourself a big round of applause. Lots of unexpected people here today. I told myself school was just something I had to get through. I was 11, only seven years to go. I felt like I was looking through a window at other kids enjoying childhood. A childhood closed off to me because I couldn't be a child in the expected child way. Believing mum's law I could be myself, so long as I didn't hurt anyone, I went to school as myself. I talked about my interests. Victorian comic opera, musical theatre, carry-on films, and kangaroos. But nothing wrong with that. I wasn't hurting anybody. Trigger warning for violence. I was punched, kicked spat at, thrown in stinging nettles, and had my head knocked against a classroom wall before I turned thirteen. A bully punched me in front of the teacher. The teacher did nothing. It's shame. It was almost like school was sending me the message being me wasn't school, wasn't what school wanted. I was confused. How could being me, when I wasn't hurting anyone, not be valuable? My school report read, If Nicola behaved less like a middle-aged spinster, she might be more successful socially. Boo! <laughs> Reading my school report, I felt the head was writing in code, sending me a secret message. I decoded the school report, unlocked the secret message. When the head wrote, middle-aged spinster, that was code for joke. When he wrote, might be more successful socially, that was code for wouldn't get beaten up by boys. Decoded. My school report read, if Nicola didn't behave like a joke, she wouldn't get hurt. Which really meant, by behaving like a joke, Nicola brings the violence on herself. Decoded still further, my school report read, put on the mask, that's a good girl. Behave like other children. We don't want kids showing their unexpected like that's something to be proud of. We'll knock the unexpectedness out of you. Cover it up. All children are equal, but some are more equal than others. I wasn't putting up with that. I dug in my heels. I didn't know the words ableism or discrimination. I didn't know the word inclusion and that what was happening to me was the opposite of inclusion. But you don't need to know the words for the wrong thing that's happening to you to know what's happening to you is wrong. I didn't cover it up. In my day, autistic social control 
involved teachers closing their eyes to kids hurting us until we got the message and started, started behaving like other kids. I didn't know how to be like other kids. They were very different to me. What was I supposed to do? Copy them? But if I copied them, I wouldn't be me anymore. And I liked being me. The violence was occasional, but I lived under the threat of violence and had to get used to it. It was worse at choir. When the choir boys got me on my own, that's when I got hurt. What was I going to do? Not go to choir? I liked choir. I kept going to choir. So that was uh, autistic social control 1980s style. Today we have behavioural compliance training of autistic children. This training, embodied by Applied Behavioural Analysis, ABBA, claims to take an, an autistic child and teach them the expected child way. Forcing eye contact, quieting unquiet hands, trampling natural autistic expression underfoot, grinding it into the ground, making the autistic child indistinguishable from their neurotypical peers. Basically, autistic conversion therapy for children. We don't like to think that this is happening. It is happening. It's happening in Britain. It's happening in Ireland. It's happening in America. It's happening on the continent, in, uh, in New Zealand, in Australia, uh, in, uh, in other places I have not researched, but probably everywhere in the world. We don't like to think it's happening but it is. And China, it is happening in China. ABBA's spokesperson, William Shatner, Captain Kirk from Star Trek, has this to say to the autistic community. This is what he tweeted. Every other person on this planet goes through a form of ABBA when growing up. It's been taught by... It's being taught by... by how, God, I, I haven't written it uh, down correctly. You can tell how interested uh, I am in it. <laughs> anyway, right, it's something on the lines of, it's been taught how polite society expects you to act. Having autism isn't really an excuse to avoid these lessons and grow up like a savage. Society will shun all who don't behave. Do you want that? That was Captain Kirk from the Starship Enterprise. He, a a walk-on role. Boo. So uh, my answer to that nonsense is society has to learn to cope. Autistics aren't going anywhere. Ableism is ugly. The autistic neurotype is beautiful. Back in the 1980s, when I was 12, my head teacher sent me the message through my school report. No one minded what happened to me because I deserved it. I minded, but I didn't count. I was on my own all the time. I behaved like a joke. Except I wasn't on my own. My parents were unexpected as well. And if I was a joke, I was a good joke. I had role models, comedy actors. I had 1980s TV show Rent-A-Ghost. Who remembers Rent-A-Ghost? Yes, 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 we have some Rent-A-Ghost fans in the audience, so you will remember. If your mansion house needs haunting, just call. We've got spooks and ghouls and freaks and fools at Rent-A-Ghost. Uh, hello, hello, uh, did you want to talk to me? Y yes, yes. A fresh... So that's at four o'clock. Go. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Good, good, good. That's just what. 
OK, so would you like to leave now is what you're saying. OK. Bye-bye. Lovely to meet you. Enjoy your cooking. Filling up a big bowl. Well, I've got all the That's like... We've got spooks and ghouls and freaks and fools at rent a ghost. Freaks and fools. I didn't want to go to middle school and get beaten up by choir boys. I wanted to go to rent a ghost, the employment agency for ghosts, run by Mr. and Mrs. Meeker, and meet Timothy Claypole, the jester, Nadia. Pop off the Russian ghost and the pantomime horse. That's where all the unexpected kids went. We grew up to be comedy actors. My role models were freaks and fools. Comedy actors. They were my reputation uh, representation. You only had to look at the actor who played Timothy Claypole, the jester, to know he'd have been bullied at school. What would he have done if he'd let bullies knock the unexpectedness out of him? He wouldn't have got his job in rent -a ghost He'd be ordinary. I worshipped actors in carry-on films. My favourite carry-on film was Carry On Screaming. It reminded me of my childhood. In Carry On Screaming was short, nervous comedy actor Peter Butterworth, who fainted at the sight of horror. I tried this out at school. The head didn't like me fainting at the sight of him. I watched Peter Butterworth in Carry On films being funny. I looked at him and thought, you'd have had a tough time at school. You, you held on to what made you, you. And look at you now, you're a comedy actor. He was my role model. I imagined bullies knocking him about, though I had no proof. I thought, if you can be who you are, I can too. A couple of years ago, I learned that not only did Peter Butterworth not like school, he found a way not to go. His son Tyler, in his show about his parents, described how his dad Peter would have what Tyler calls nervous breakdowns and fits, so he didn't have to go to school. What a good idea. So much better than meeting a head who misunderstood him and wrote on his school report, if Peter behaved less like a middle-aged bachelor, he might be more successful socially. P Peter Butterworth spent the Second World War in prisoner of war camps after enemy forces shot his plane down. He was recruited by military intelligence and sent coded letters out of the camp and was quietly decorated after the war. Perhaps as a child, worshipping him because he was like me, short, nervous and funny, I picked up something of his endurance in the face of struggle. What a good person to have as a role model. I converted the comedy actors I loved into role models, modelling myself on them. If you see it, you can be it. The actors I loved, regardless of whether they were autistic, who knows, were certainly unexpected, making their living from being unexpected. If they could stay unexpected, I could too. Worshipping uh, comedy actors, my role models who made being unexpected their must-have quality got me through school violence. The violence stopped when I turned 13 and was replaced by teasing. Teasing was a piece of cake. I discovered reading. I discovered Harriet the Spy by American author Louise Fitzhugh. That's the story of an unexpected kid who gets into trouble at school through her big interest in spying. I've brought that book with me. I read Witch Week by British author Diana Wynne-Jones, a story where unexpected kids have magical powers and are called witches and are burned if their magical powers are discovered, so they have to go undercover as typical kids, so not to be burned. Ring any bells? But their magical powers keep leaking out. 
Books by Diana Wynne Jones told me I wasn't the only unexpected kid. There were others. TV shows and comedy records and films and books where I met unexpected people free to be themselves got me through childhood. Role models, if you can see it, you can be it. See unexpectedness? Unexpectedness, obviously metaphor for autism, whether the person is autistic or not. You can be unexpected if you tell yourself you're seeing unexpectedness. Even if your role models aren't autistic, you can be unexpected. I haven't gone on to be a comedy actor. I spent decades showing I was autistic without knowing I was. My head teacher sent me the message being unexpected was a bad joke. But the comedy actors I worshipped sent me the message being unexpected was a good joke. And good jokes are funny. I wanted to be funny. In 2015, I learned I was autistic. I was running a children's comedy pie-in-the-face travelling show for cancer charities. The precision and depth I put into what some would say was a daft endeavour showed me I couldn't really be anything else. I was 44. I want inclusion for the autistic community, especially children. I want liberty, equality and fraternity. I want for today's children what I didn't have as a child, an experience of being valuable, as valuable as children who followed the expected child way. I want to live in a society where autistic children are not sent messages from home, school and community that they would be more pleasing if they masked. Masking is at the expense of the natural autistic way. Masking can lead to not knowing who you are. Not knowing who you are can lead to struggle with mental health. I don't want that for today's children. I'm writing a show about my experience as an autistic child, while my friend, Rubinia Rubins, is writing a show about blossoming into a trans neurodivergent adult. We've joined forces. Our show, Freaks and Fools, the Cabaret, is previewing in Wanstead and Camden before we take it to Edinburgh. Where I want to help with representation is telling the story about being the child who showed I was autistic without knowing I was, becoming the adult who showed I was autistic and did know. Our community needs stories about how society responds to autistic, autistics who show who we are. We need to tell our stories. We don't have enough stories yet. We need more stories. I'll finish with some musical comedy. Big hand for Rubinia Rubins, who's coming up now. Well, uh, I, I will do a little bit of uh, talking, tell you things you already know. Uh, just out of interest, uh, uh, yeah, I'd be just, just before I do comedy, I'll, 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 I'll do a bit more talking because you can see I like it and I've got the mic. Yeah, I, 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 and Ruby knows it, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so in lockdown, I wrote a piece about uh, being an unexpected child, sent it off to an autistic-led charity. Then I wrote a piece about being an, an unexpected adult. Then I started doing comedy uh, about being unexpected. Uh, and, uh, and then I was asked to do this talk. And so the talk has grown out of uh, uh, everything that's uh, come uh, before. So I always start my comedy by saying, I'm a short, fat, autistic queer. I'm as autistic as fuck. I am where normal comes to die. That's why I should never have a mic. Hello. My parents were autistic as well. They taught me how to do it. Dad's big interest was flying saucers. Mum's torment. Dad dreamed of building a silvery disc with an unearthly beam. He invented 
the electromechanical plasma reaction drive which powered the first real flying saucer. Mum felt he loved the electromechanical plasma reaction drive more than he loved her. Dad danced about the prison ship. Yes, uh, Mum had a life-size replica prison ship in the basement, but that's another story. Dad danced about the prison ship singing. Electromechanical plasma reaction drive powering the first real flying saucer. Off to other worlds. We've so many other worlds to see. We're after the same galaxies and going round the bend. My imaginary friend. Electromechanical plasma reaction drive powering the first real flying saucer. And me. Thank you for applauding Dad's love song too the electromechanical plasma reaction drive. He's 80 years old now and still wants to build a flying saucer. I was bullied at school. My bullies were choir boys. They didn't call me by my name, Nicky Veer Compton, but their name, Fuckala Queer Flompton. I felt Fuckala Queer Flompton made me sound like a goddess, a queer goddess. I set up a shrine in the hope of attracting offerings and worshippers. I attracted violence. Wanting to escape my bully's violence into something real, with hard drugs unavailable to an 11-year-old, I discovered the next best thing. Victorian comic opera. I said to mum, I'm not a little girl. I'm not a little boy. I'm a comic baritone. Look. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second class carriage. And you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde and they all came on board at Sloan Square and South Kensington stations and around on the journey you... Back to school bullying. I think the intensity of the bullying had something to do with my rejection of the gender binary and my assertion that comic baritone was a gender identity in its own right, just like genderqueer non-binary, only musical. My school report read, if Nicola behaved less like a middle-aged spinster, she might be more successful socially. I wasn't putting up with that. I wasn't. Fuck a queer Flompton. Middle-aged spinster and queer goddess. I was fuck a queer Flompton. Middle-aged bachelor and queer god. <laughs> Life was hard for Fuckalus the god. I sought refuge in books about the Emperor Claudius, who, like me, began as a bullied, socially awkward, disabled kid. His bullies all wanted to become emperor. They murdered their rivals and each other, but they never killed Claudius because they wanted someone to laugh at. 
And when they were all dead, Claudius became emperor. I danced about my middle school singing. Tiberius, Claudius, Drusus, Nero, Germanicus, Britannicus. Off to ancient Rome. It feels like home from home to me. Tiberius, Claudius, Drusus, Nero, Germanicus, Britannicus, and me. I liked my old school better. They offered me the chance to play God in Captain Noah and his floating zoo. But my parents took me away. My parents are bastards. I thought I could play God for you right here, right now, sing you my version of God's big number in Captain Noah and his floating zoo. I'm the God of the Israelites, wow, the Bible VIP. I'm causing a flood because you've not been good and now you're bothering me. I'm a power-crazed megalomaniac, I rant and scream and shout and blow my stack and ramp it up and boss you all about. Oh, be do I want a floating zoo-hoo-hoo. I want a pelican, an anteater, a kangaroo. You see, it's true. A god like me, shooby dooby dooby, can actually wipe the floor with you one more time. Can actually wipe the floor with you. I've been uh, Nikki Veer Compton. This has been the wonderful Rubinia Rubens. Do come and see us either at Wanstead or Camden. I have flyers. And thank you so much for being a lovely audience. And thank you for listening to my drawing.